yeah it's it's actually unbelievable yeah, yeah if, if i think back if i think back to that parking lot <laughs> you know mm-hmm. where i was just telling brandon don't let me go don't let me go <laughs> and now i see this it's yeah i i could not see that coming now it's like the the car pretty much just sits in the garage <laughs> for the longest time <laughs> and we just go everywhere by bike Hi everyone, welcome to the Active Town channel. I'm John and that was Tatiana Salis Lust. And boy, am I excited and delighted to share this conversation I had a few weeks ago with Tatiana about her amazing transformation into an everyday cargo bike rider in her new hometown of Carmel, Indiana. Along the way, we talk about her journey, what it takes to get more women riding more often, and she shares her advice for those wondering if it's too late to learn how to ride. But before we dive into all that goodness, I just wanted to say thank you so very much for tuning in. I produce this content in the hope that I can help inspire others, perhaps you, to join me in this movement to create and promote a culture of activity for all ages and abilities. So having you here means so much to me, and it's always wonderful to have you along for the ride. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Tatiana. Tatiana, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is great. Now, this is super, super fun, and you got to love technology when it works. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed that <laughs> the technology <laughs> gods, uh, you know, are, are kind to us here today. Um, we're going to dive into a, a lot of really fun stuff, but let's just take this moment, this opportunity for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was born and raised in Brazil, <laughs> uh, more like the southeast part of Brazil. And, um, and I, I went to grad school, actually undergrad school there, got my bachelor's. Uh, but then I had the opportunity to do an exchange program. Um, and I ended up coming to the U.S. as an exchange student first. And then I ended up staying for my grad school as well. Um, then during that time, I met <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we got married and... Yeah, there's a whole lot of story (laughs) uh, behind that. But anyway, we ended up here um, in Carmel, Indiana now. Fantastic. Well, you you mentioned Brandon, so that's how we know each other is through Brandon. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) And uh, so Brandon has been on the podcast before. He's been uh, one of my guests uh, on the podcast. He goes by the... uh, the, the tagline uh, on Twitter, uh, American Feetzer. So uh, he's, he's kind of why we're here in the sense that, you know, he became fascinated with Dutch cycling and Dutch culture and things of that nature. And we'll, we'll, we can get into that a little bit, or folks can go back and listen to that podcast. We don't have to talk about him, so they can do that. <laughs> But but we're I'm gonna pull up a photo here and because this is you you jumped very very quickly to the fact that you guys are in Carmel now you've you've been there for how long have you been in Carmel now? Um, for about six months. Has it yeah. been that or has it not been longer long. than that? No, not really. We moved here in the summer last in, summer <laughs> in the summer. Okay, so when I saw Brandon there in Carmel in June, it was, he was really new. Yeah. So oh, mm-hmm. very good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We had just moved here. You had just moved there. So I'm going to pull this photo up because this is a great photo. Um, this is you super, super happy on this bike. <laughs> and, um, and it just warms my heart when I see this be one, because I know your story, but I'm going to have you share the story with the audience because there's a lot behind what you know getting to this point and 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 getting to to this smiling person in this amazing place there in carmel indiana you're you're just off uh on the the main drag there on uh, monon boulevard which is you know kind of a redo of the monon trail so we'll we'll pull that up and 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 talk a little bit about uh i I just wanted that little sneak preview of of where we're at today but take Mm -hmm. us back to uh you know 2015 you were kind of just getting started with this whole adventure with, you know, bikes and stuff like that. And, and in 2015, had, had, 
had Brandon already visited the Netherlands yet? I don't remember that. Uh, no. No. Okay, not, so that no, was before. Not in 2015. Okay. Correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, great. So take us back to 2015. You were just kind of learning how to ride a bike again, right? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we actually we try to adventure ourselves first on rollerblades, <laughs> but that didn't work out so well. So we decided to trade <laughs> the rollerblades um, for bikes, uh, and then yeah, just like you said, I had to learn it again. Um, the the story is when I was a kid, I used to ride a very tiny bike. Uh, <laughs> but the, <laughs> that's a great picture. Um, it was a very tiny bike and all. And then, you know, there was one day that I, I, I crashed really bad. Mm-hmm. And after that, I just wasn't able to ride again. And, you know, for years and years and years, <laughs> and it wasn't until, uh, that time <laughs> right there, uh, that Brandon decided to, to help me. Uh, learn again and and overcome my fear, my trauma um, of riding a bike. Uh, so that was that picture right there was the exact <laughs> moment when he let me go. <laughs> he was he was all the time there, you know, just holding the saddle, <laughs> and I was there trusting that he was there holding the saddle, like don't let me go, don't let me go. I just felt like a kid again. Uh, and then eventually he did and then took that picture. I was yeah. extremely nervous, but also that bike was for me pretty large. So right. that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, and, and I think as I recall, when, when I was interviewing him, he had talked a little bit about that, uh, of the fact that it's so important to make sure that you're, you're on the right size bike and you're on a bike that's really, really comfortable for you. And, and, and he had mentioned that that made a, a big difference. So, um, Correct. I, I, I wanted to try to zoom in a little bit on that cause I can see your smile. <laughs> you're like, <"Whoa, laughs> this is great. That was just, it was, ner- I was nervous. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Very tense. <laughs> So, um, oh, I, I hit the wrong button. Let's get you back here. Oh, there you, there I am. So that's good. Uh, so that's, that's great though. So learning how to ride a bike again as an adult, you, you mentioned it, you know, getting over the fear and, and all of that. What do you, ad- what advice do you have for, you know, other, other adults, uh, other women that, that may not feel super, super comfortable and maybe they're, you know, just not sure how to go. What advice would you have having gone through that experience just six years ago? It's never too late. (laughs) Um, So do not worry and um, make sure, make sure that you are someplace, you know, when you're starting again, you are somewhere safe. You saw there on that picture, I was in the parking lot. (laughs) It was pretty much empty, nobody around. So make sure you're safe. um, And, you know, you might fall and crash again, just be ready for it and just get up and, and get going again. Um, it, it'll be just fine and have someone with you, you know, to support you, to to help you along the way and and, and teach you some tips and tricks <laughs> uh, on that as well. Um, another thing too is to make sure that you have, like you mentioned, a uh, proper size um, bike, that, that will help you a lot as well. So you can feel more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, I, I have another photo here that we'll pull up and, uh, because now in this photo, we have a proper size bike <laughs> <laughs> for me, yes. for you. So, so <laughs> tell us about this bike. Uh, okay. So, all right. What we're talking about here, you know, the proper size bike. And so just on record here, um, I am, well, in metrics, uh, I'm, I'm 1.64, uh, meters tall <laughs> or in feet, that would be, um, five foot four, right. <laughs> uh, something like that. Uh, and, and yeah, that's why that bike right there was, uh, that day we went to the bike shop just so I could test ride that bike. Um, Brandon had gone 
to an event uh, mm -hmm. where they they had this uh, they were exposing different bikes from different brands and and novelty bikes and uh, things like that. And he then he he saw this bike that is an e bike, um, and he was like, well, you know, it's an e bike, uh, and based on that size, that size, I think that maybe Tatiana will feel more comfortable because now she can put her feet on the ground, right, and uh, the the center of gravity. <laughs> Gra yeah. gravity will be lower as well so we decided to go there to the bike shop so i could try it and it was it, it was a big difference for me yeah. it was amazing we used to go there before just to like um rent a bike and just mm -hmm. go around the lake you know on the weekend or something and i would get maybe larger bikes and i was never that comfortable but i was still trying to learn again but then when i tried that one <laughs> and i could you know i could feel closer to the ground and yeah. i could just put my feet easily on the ground anytime i needed it gave me confidence yeah let's press play on this <laughs> Did you hear yourself giggling there? <laughs> <laughs> because That's, it was so easy. <laughs> it was so easy and it, and it was fun. And what I love about that little clip is, I mean, that is just it, the, the pure joy just starts jumping out. What, tell us about those emotions. Tell us about how did that feel at that moment, being able to go up that hill? Yeah, just like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, oh my gosh, it was such a huge accomplishment, right? And maybe for for the majority of people, adults, maybe even some kids, <laughs> you know, that's just so like normal, right? People might think, oh my goodness, why was <laughs> was she so happy about that? But um, in yeah, in my case, uh, it was it was a huge deal. Um, like I said, regular bikes, um, regular size bikes, I still had trouble on them. But then when I tried that one, the, the, the fact that it has the E assist, so it helps me get going. So it helps me, um, uh, uh, get on that balance that I need, right. More easily um that that was wonderful and then being able to go uphill like that with minimum effort was also very very nice yeah and not not feeling not feeling scared or you know if i had to put if i hit if i had to put too much effort on pedaling i would certainly lose my balance lose control and start wobbling yeah <laughs> And to be clear, that was your test ride. That, <laughs> that was, was my when, test ride. That was your test yeah. ride. That wasn't even the bike that you ended up getting. Here, here's your bike. Here's your yeah. new bike. This is new bike day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So that was just the test run, mm -hmm. and I ended up buying the same model at mm -hmm. the time. Right. Uh, yeah, because, again, you know, I tested it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can ride this one. Right. So now I can go places <laughs> and yeah. also we decided to to buy that one. So that was the first um, e assist bike that I had. Yeah. And so this, as folks will be able to see from the sign here, this is in Minneapolis. So this was prior to the move to Carmel. And right. uh, so so you're still up in Minneapolis at this time. Look at those beautiful tulips. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I know. Yeah. And <laughs> and again, just beaming, you know, new bike day. You're getting out there. There's the name of the, the bike shop, Perennial Cycles there in Minneapolis. Did a good job. Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. Mr. American <laughs> Feetzer himself. Very Correct. good. Correct. So cool to see that. Talk a little bit about that. What has this meant for... Um, for you to be able to rediscover the bike and really discover the bike for the very first time in a positive way. And, 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 and 
also expand upon that and, and talk a little bit about how that's made a difference in terms of, you know, you being able to hang out with this big oaf. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah. yeah, very true. Because, um, well, of course, with the, you know, the average bike, wasn't really able to go on bike rides with him uh, mm -hmm. that much. Or if I did, uh, he was always so worried about me, right? Always looking over his shoulder to, to make sure that I was okay, that I was still there <laughs> and not on the ground somewhere. Um, so it wasn't you know maybe not uh, not that um pleasant right uh, uh to ride but after we found um this e-bike smaller size proper for me uh then i was able to ride more so i could actually get that practice and and learn more and and feel more confident on the bike um but also now we're just able to pretty much bike everywhere together you know it's it's not like a it's not like a, a chore anymore <laughs> you know it's it's not that difficult anymore we can just go oh let's go this place yeah okay let's go and we can bike together and he's not he can enjoy the ride as well and not be worried about me Right, because now he's also confident that that I'll be there, <laughs> that I that I can follow him. <laughs> um, yeah, and so so it's it's great. We've yeah. we've been able to do a lot more, and and you know, and especially now where we are, and and you've seen, uh, it's it's so easy to bike everywhere here. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll get to that in a moment. But you're you're mm -hmm. pointing at something rather special here. What, what is that you're pointing at? <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> uh, so tell <laughs> tell us why it's so special that you're pointing at a box of uh, a pizza. It was my it was my first load. <laughs> you're you're a, you're a freight carrying cyclist now. You're e exactly. There's the cargo for the e-cargo bike. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's <laughs> that's the cargo on my e-cargo bike exactly. So that was my first load. We nice. uh you know, still in Minnesota, we went on a bike ride uh to the trail to get some you know, exercise and everything. And then uh, after pedaling uh, lots of miles, <laughs> um, we decided that, okay, now we, we deserve some calories now, little <laughs> treats. So we decided to stop by uh, that pizza place. And uh, yeah, and then Brenda was like, okay, this is going to be your first cargo. <laughs> put the pizza box there. Yeah, so. yeah, because truth be told, he could have put it in his big basket. I know he could. <laughs> Definitely. No, but every, every time we get pizza, it goes on my bike and then yeah. he takes the pictures. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's great. So the, I wanted to, to switch to this photo simply because it, it starts to speak to this concept of exploration together. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, because now I wasn't, I wasn't just on parking lots. Right. Right. Or or just on some simple wide trail. I was actually being able to go into parks, going into places, cross bridges and and things like that. So, exp yeah, it expanded, the, uh, expanded more yeah. where I and, could and go. going <laughs> and going to places like this, a meaningful destination. I, I take it this must mm -hmm. be the uh, the community garden that that you used to visit uh, when you lived in the Minneapolis area. Yes, yes, yes. We we had a plot there at the community garden, and it was it was wonderful. Um, especially <laughs> during this pandemic times that we were isolated. We, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. That was the one place where <laughs> we could go and feel safe. Was the garden? Yeah, so that was that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's for our super men cool. mental health. Yeah. <laughs> there he is again. Yay. <laughs> that's fantastic yes. 
Minnesota has beautiful trails. Yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lakes and trails and everything. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was wonderful biking there as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Now, we're going to shift gears here. We're going to go okay. out of country. So oh. <laughs> what's going on here? What's this all about? <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> yes, that was in the Netherlands. <laughs> I was able to ride a bike there as well. Mm -hmm. um, after, okay, so there is a little story there too. Is that okay, okay if I tell you? Oh, yeah, All right. absolutely. <laughs> so we went to a bike store mm -hmm. to rent a bike. And they only had adult sized bikes and mm -hmm. you know adult sized bikes in in the netherlands <laughs> those are pretty large for me um so we got one and i decided well you know i'm gonna try i've been riding you know my bike uh for a while now so mm -hmm. maybe maybe i'll be able to step up you know so <laughs> we got this regular size bike and the very first street i was i was trying to to get out of place and, and take off and i couldn't i just couldn't because no matter how low the saddle was mm. i could not put my feet on the ground yeah yeah <laughs> and and then i couldn't feel safe and i you know i started feeling very uneasy about it right. and i told brandon i was like i'm so sorry i cannot ride this one yeah. so he was like okay let's go back to the back shop let's see if we can find something else uh turns out we found a different bike shop mm -hmm. that had smaller bikes ah. and it was funny because well but the funny part is that the manager there <laughs> he he was like are you sure you're gonna ride that bike <laughs> i was like yeah and he goes, but that's for kids. <laughs> I was like, well, that's exactly what I need. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, th anyway. I think we might have a photo. Of this. Do we, <laughs> was this the first one or, or the second one? Yeah, that's the second one. This is the so second that, one. Yeah. That, yeah, that one was smaller. There so. we go. Yes. So yeah. that's that's the one that they told me it was for kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you but fit that one was okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one was okay. I was able to ride that one just fine. <laughs> Fantastic, and and you're just you're just kind of cycling along, and I'll just run a little bit of this because as proof, you know, we're moving. This is good. Yes, this yes. is awesome. <laughs> so, obviously, the Netherlands has been incredibly impactful for for Brandon, and um, as as I recall from his story that he told me that. You know, the whole reason why he was in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, is because you were there for work and uh, sort of dragged him along and said, no, come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> and, it, and it obviously changed his, his, his life dramatically. But what, what was it like for you to now be there out on, you know, on the, 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 the Dutch cycle tracks and, and the Dutch infrastructure and riding along, now that you have a little bit more confidence, you have your own bike and you're killing it there in Minneapolis and, and having fun. And now look at you, you're, you're riding the Dutch cycle network too. Talk a little bit about that. How, how powerful was that for you? It was amazing. I would never... I would never think that I would do that someday, <laughs> actually. Um, so I was, yeah, I was surprised by it as well. But it's actually, it was pretty easy to ride a bike there, you know, uh, despite of bike size or, <laughs> or not being e-assist or things like that. So, so despite of those bike limitations, um, because of the infrastructure too, uh, I felt safer at the time um, riding there because there were so many other people riding bikes as well. And, and you see how uh, motorists there um, are very respectful and attentive to, to pedestrians and, and cyclists too. Yeah. 
and it sounds like from from the the way that you just phrased that 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 was very very important for you at that stage oh yeah very much because um <laughs> like I mentioned before, uh, when I was, you know, in Minneapolis, I would go on parking lots and some safe trails. And then I was able to expand that a little bit to more like parks and public places. Um, but I was still very uneasy on whenever we had those shared lanes, right, where um, you have the road and then you just have a painted lane there and then there are cars passing right by you all the time i couldn't i couldn't do that i would feel very uncomfortable i would you know easy easily lose my balance if a car passed by me um at a certain speed so yeah that was still not very comfortable (laughs) but then in the netherlands like you know for example you have you have places where you have no cars at all or it's it's really separated and yeah. and you know you can feel safe that way yeah yeah and then along comes <laughs> this what's <laughs> happening here <laughs> okay so <laughs> then we went back to the after a while we went back to the back shop uh to try something a little bit larger uh not not in height I would still right. need my 20 inch wheels. <laughs> I would still need to be low, closer to the ground, um, but something larger in terms of cargo. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, we decided to go there so I could try um, the GSD and the HSD. Right. And those are two from different from models. Yeah, from Turn. And, Correct. And, uh, you know, really and and again you, you can see that uh e assist from bosch there the 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 electric assist motor on that yeah. so uh mm-hmm. so what were you planning on doing carrying bigger pizza boxes <laughs> pizza delivery um okay so yeah so before i had the vectron mm-hmm. uh yeah, and then no over there would be really just so I could you know do more with it, yeah. uh, and go get groceries and get something. Yeah, look at those large. big pantyer bags. something larger as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> good, good stuff. Good stuff. So that's like the burgeoning aspect of somebody who's thinking about a bike in a different way. It's not just about going out for. Um, a leisurely ride, although you can certainly do that. And and I know that that you all do that frequently. And it's not just you carrying yourself to the community garden. Um, You can totally do that and and everything. I mean, this is a different phase. This is you actually thinking about, yeah, I can see the value in having um, a bike where I can carry stuff. Talk a little mm-hmm. bit more about that. Why is that so important for you? Yeah, it's it's basically a, a all-in-one <laughs> principle, right? So it's not just for exercising uh, or just for leisure, like you said. It's actually everything. So you can go get your exercise done. Um, you can also, you know, go sightseeing, see people, um, but you can also go get get your groceries, carry things around and go from A to B. So you can do, you know, all of those things at once <laughs> while um, riding your bike. So that's that that's really fun uh, to do because it, it, it doesn't get boring. It doesn't get um, exhausting, you know, in terms of like, oh, I have to ride my bike to get my exercise. So then, you know, maybe, maybe it gets a bit exhausting. You're like, oh, I don't have the energy to do that. But, but then if you, you know, if you think of like, oh, let's go to a a bar, you know, meet up with some people and all. So you go ride your bike, you, you see things, you, you, you go sightseeing, you, you actually 
breathe some fresh air, <laughs> right? Enjoy the sun. Um, you see people passing by on the trail and, you know, you say hi, you socialize, and then you get to your point B, you already got your exercise as well and you feel refreshed. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, you know, if the mood, you know, sort of is there, you, you go out and get big, huge boxes. <laughs> what on exactly. earth did you do? Exactly. You have it. <laughs> oh, there you are. Is that a yeah. bread maker? It was a toaster oven. A toaster <laughs> oven. Yeah. Well, you, you you have a cargo bike. It's pretty much the SUV of bikes, right? So, yeah, you can carry all sorts say, of things. That we <laughs> that was bags my... of something there. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, those like were. Mulch. It yeah. was. Yeah. It was indeed. It's so <laughs> bags of mulch. <laughs> so that was yeah. That was mulch for for our garden toaster um, oven. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, there's <laughs> there you back at the garden again. So my my very first big cargo yeah. was that poster oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is again. And that, that, yeah, that was when Brandon was like, okay, she can do it. <laughs> she, she can do it. <laughs> she, she graduated. <laughs> so I I mean talk a little bit about that. I mean I don't want to make any assumptions here, but it seems like you're you're pretty once you had that initial confidence, um, you seem pretty bold. You, you, you seem up to the challenge. Is, is that part of your nature or is that something you've worked on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, something that I've been working on, um, you know, especially because I, you know, I spent so many years afraid of actually getting on a bike, <laughs> right? So it, yeah, it just took that, you know, it just took that moment of saying, okay, let's, you know, let's do this. Let's try it. <laughs> let's persevere. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that, that, that took some exercising, but <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad that we worked on it. And of course, with a lot of support from Brandon as well, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. if it was only up to me, I probably would not be able to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he caught a certain passion and, uh, I know he's absolutely delighted that you're also sharing in that passion too. Looks like we went and to did, did some cupcake shopping here. So filling that basket full of cupcakes, perhaps, <laughs> but here, oh, here, we go. Here, here we have our veggies. That's that's, healthier. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's healthier. There, there, that's, this is healthier. So that's good. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, you you go places, you're burning the calories, and sometimes you can just treat yourself. Oh, to absolutely. A Are you or kidding? That's that's why we ride, right? Exactly. And so then a huge life change comes along. Up next, Tatiana is going to talk about their big move and another new bike. But first, please allow me a brief second to promote my newly launched Active Towns online store where you can find some really fun and silly Streets Are For People merch for sale. So please do check it out later. The link is in the description below and in the show notes. Okay, let's get right back to my conversation with Tatiana. You, you, the two of you decide to pull up stakes and leave Minneapolis and go to Carmel, Indiana. Tell us a little bit about that story. Yeah, um... So, yeah, that's kind of interesting, you know, despite of uh, all the negatives around this pandemic, um, the one thing that actually helped us in a way, if I may say it that way, um, was that I was allowed to go remote. Uh, and. Of course, many companies are doing that. Many people are doing that now. Um, so because of that, we decided, okay, so since we're we're biking some more and we're really integrating this bike uh, culture and in our lives, so let's try to go to a place where we can actually make the most out of it, right? Uh, and Brandon already knew about Carmel, um, the infrastructure here. Um, and then we decided that, okay, let's, let's investigate. Let's take a look. And Brandon did his research 
Um, after months of researching and contacting people here, you know, to figure out how how we could get a place here and all, it worked out, and here we are. <laughs> so that's great too. Very good. And, and here's a here's a, a quick picture here of. Uh, let's see if I can get this uh, photo to. You can see. There, I want to make sure I get your pets in the in the background there. So. <laughs> My pets. <laughs> the Canadian geese. All right. So maybe not really your pets. You know, just the, the, the neighborhood uh, visitors. Correct. So, so you arrive in, in Carmel. Um, did you have a chance to visit Carmel before you made the decision to move there? Oh, that was about 10 years ago. So it was a while um, ago. So none of this oh, new yeah. infrastructure was in place. No, no. Yeah. Car Carmel was already a really pretty city, right. yep. but a lot has changed <laughs> yeah. uh, since then. But yeah, it was about 10 years ago. And actually, I was still a grad student there uh, okay. in Illinois. Right. Yeah. So yep. yeah. So both Brandon and I lived in Illinois at the time, and we decided to go to Carmel uh, to get a burger from a place there that was on TV once. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. What was yeah. that place called? I, I remember seeing it. Now. Bob's Burger. There you go, Bob's Burger. Yeah. And it has like <laughs> yeah. this massive, massive burger, right? Yeah, they had that challenge. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And and there was a TV program that went there once yeah, and all. Yeah. So we saw that and we decided, okay, we have to go there and <laughs> and try it. So yeah, that was the very first time um, I had been to to Carmel actually. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. brings us back to our, our opening photo here. So as we're scrolling through these photos, um, and as I rolled into Carmel to, to visit with Brandon in June, one of the things that I noticed was just how much the infrastructure reminded me of the Netherlands. Yes. Yes. And, um, well, you, you, you may have talked to Brandon about this before, but yes, the... They do consult, um, yeah, with European um, engineers. Uh, so it, it is it is really with uh, the Netherlands and Denmark in mind yeah. Yeah, definitely. that they make all these improvements here. So I paused on this photo. Uh, we were just scrolling through a couple of them so folks could get a, a little bit of a sense of what Carmel is like. But I pa paused on this one because this is this is pretty cool. What's going on here? Oh yeah. Um, so it was summertime. We were having the uh, farmer's market. Ah, that's what the tents yeah. are back there. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah, there are several little tents back there. So that's the farmer's market mm -hmm. and they actually have that huge bike parking there with valet services and all. So that's, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. And, and another thing, another thing on that picture, um, you see that I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> yeah, I, I do notice yeah. that. T talk a little bit more yeah. about the, uh, about that and, and, you know, what's going on here? Come on, come on, Tatiana, what's going on here? <laughs> well, that's, that's another great thing too. You know, I'm not, I'm not riding my bike to, I'm, I'm not cycling, right? Just to, to try to get some exercise or anything. It's really a transportation, mode of transportation in, in this case. So yeah, dress up, dress up to your destination. It's something that Brandon says a lot. Yeah. Um, you, yeah, you don't have to wear, you know, athlete or sports clothes to ride, ride your bike. You can actually dress up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, you, and that's another thing that you see, uh, you know, in, in Europe, too. You see people right. going to work, going to school, and they're all dressed up um, riding their bikes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, look at that. <laughs> and here's you, here's you just kind of relaxing and, and taking in the sights. And so, so, so for the viewers here and, and also for the benefit of, of the, uh, the audio only audience here, uh, this particular photo, Tatiana is just kind of relaxing on a bench with her bike, 
right next to the uh, the infrastructure, um, the the brick pavers. There is is the, sort of the shared space area where uh, you know the motor vehicles are allowed to go through, and then the gray area there with the the dotted lines through it is the old Monon Trail that's been you know created on the Monon Boulevard there. And the the little orange thing that you see sticking up there in the distance that's the bike counter. So that's an eco counter, bike counter. Uh, sort of doing that and and you just talk a little bit about what it's been like to be in this neighborhood and have this as your new I don't want to call it front yard or backyard but I mean your new playground I mean this is your new community what's that been like and compare that to to what it's been like in some of the other places that you've lived um quality of life um, it's a big change, you know, if you, you feel safer here, it's uh, more peaceful, um, quieter too. And, and also, well, especially summertime, <laughs> it is so nice to get on the trail. You, you know, if you're just walking or riding your bike, but there's so many other people doing the same thing riding bikes and you see kids um, on their skate uh, skateboards or rollerblades uh, or even other uh, other uh, funny transportation devices that we have nowadays right. exactly. uh, yeah those hoverboards and things like that um, but yeah and and then you see you know families just pushing their strollers down the street and walking their their dogs and all and so many people just just enjoying the environment enjoying the space um actually socializing right um in, a, in an open area of course and social distancing and all but but being able to socialize see people and it it, it it's just amazing you're not you're not secluded, you know, in your um, house there with your circle and and maybe, you know, just hopping in your car to go somewhere and then back um, and you don't even see things or enjoy or appreciate things around you, right? Because it's, it's always... Uh, everything's such a hurry and all, but, but here, no, here you can just enjoy the trip as well as, as well. you go somewhere. Yeah. So you're enjoying mm -hmm. the trip as well as you're enjoying the destination, this being one mm -hmm. of the destinations, but you have lots of yeah. other destinations as well. Talk a little bit about that, uh, that transition up oh, here we go. <laughs> more, more cargo. Yeah. I'm getting some potty mix there. Uh, gotta load up that HSD. <laughs> I see a theme here. You're a cargo carrying king. Look at oh, here we go. And, and oh, more yeah. potting mix. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um so yeah, so talk about that though, because you, you mentioned, you know, it's it, it's it's enjoyable for the ride as well as getting to that destination. What's it like getting from from your house to that downtown area? Super easy and quick. <laughs> It takes like five minutes uh, to get there. And um, again, all, you know, safe, separated bike lanes. Or if I decide to just take a shortcut and, you know, go through a neighborhood, it's also um, pretty safe uh, to do so as well. And motorists here, I guess, the majority, um, they they are immersed in this culture so they look out for pedestrians and, and for bikes as well um and especially you know when you are in the city center like this where uh you can see it's it's being built for for people and you have kids playing everywhere running everywhere and all so yes um yeah. I, th I think everybody tends to be very careful there and I paused on this photo just because it's such a wonderful photo to soak up. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the plaza areas that's just off of the, the Monon Trail. And what an extraordinary 
uh, place, uh, city gathering place. And uh, we'll make sure that we do a, a bigger profile on the city of Carmel at some point in time and really talk about the fact that before this was built, there it really didn't have a city center. It really didn't have a downtown core. I mean, it had Main mm-hmm. Street that was cutting through, but that was pretty much about it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is pretty. Yeah. This is, but this is extraordinary, and I'm assuming that this is a really uh, a amazing place for you and Brandon to be able to come as a family and experience. Talk a little bit about that. How how much has this had an impact on um, your your sort of daily life and, and being able to have this this type of amenity nearby? Um. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's 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 wonderful. It's a big positive change as well. Um, you know, just because you 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 no longer have to be bored or you know sedentary <laughs> you're, you're at home just watching tv and then you know it's like oh, okay let's hop on our bikes and you know go to the city center there there are several micro breweries there um yeah places to go and and you know and meet up with some friends and all music live music and such so yeah let's let's go so instead of just you know sitting around <laughs> in your living room just uh, uh wasting time away uh you, yeah you can just go and enjoy that and there's several different places to go to uh as well uh there are parks you know that you can go to and just enjoy you, you can hear you can hear the crickets, the birds, the frogs, right? <laughs> and yeah. and and that's something that we couldn't really experience before. Yeah. And and we can do that here now. Um yeah. and again, it's it's really good for your body but also for your mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll bring this uh, photo up and this will be one of our our last shots, but it, again, it's just <laughs> a, a classic shot of you exemplifying that you're, you're, you're dressing for your destination, not the journey. Um, it's really about the joy of that active mobility. I mean, gosh, when you think back to 2015, six years ago, just, you know, relearning, wow, what, what's that been like? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I can see the smile. I can see the smile. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's actually unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, If if I think back, if I think back to that parking lot, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. where I was just telling Brandon, "Don't let me go! Don't let me go!" (laughs) And now I see this. It's yeah. I I could not see that coming. Yeah. Um. I you know I thought that maybe yeah I would ride my bike a little bit you know but then eventually I would maybe feel a little bit, you know, defeated, like, oh, yeah, no, I cannot do this, you know, but no, totally the opposite. Now it's like the the car pretty much just sits in the garage for the longest time, (laughs) and we just go everywhere by bike. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so cool. And I, I'm going to pull up a, a another photo here. This is just, you know, this kind of exemplifies the fact that you're just jumping on the bike and doing re- everyday run-of-the-mill types of things. You're going shopping here. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit about how this has impacted your sense of mobility, freedom, um, and independence. Because what what I'm noticing about some of this this stuff here is that it, I mean, sur- sure Brandon might have taken the photo, but for all I know, you're taking the photo here and sending it to Brandon. <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, there yes. you go. Perfect. My yeah. point exactly. So so talk uh, so talk a little bit about that. How powerful is that? That you're now getting on a bike and going grocery shopping on a bike. You could just as easily jump in the car and go. Why are you yeah, doing that? I, talk a, talk yeah. a little bit of how powerful that is for you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, actually, I couldn't. Another thing too. Here, yeah, I couldn't do that 
um, before we moved to Carmel. Mm -hmm. um, just again, you know, the 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 route to get to the closest grocery store grocery store where we were before, um, you know, wasn't that great. Uh, but then after we moved to here, it's so easy to, <laughs> to go to the to the close to the closest grocery store. Um, and, and it's great because that that's a um, great motivation too. It would be so easy to just hop on the car and then go get your groceries. But it would be it would be, you know, kind of like you dread having to do that, right? Because oh, I have to go get groceries. And and it's really just going there and getting groceries, right? So yeah. kind of dread that it's really a, a, a chore, right? So but now in this case here, it's like, oh, OK, cool. I have to go get groceries. I, you know, I get to ride my bike there. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just take my time, breathe some fresh air, uh, enjoy seeing the neighborhood, seeing kitties sitting on uh, windows, you know, or, or uh, people walking their dogs around. And, and you, you know, you can see that and say hi to people and all. So uh, then you get to the grocery store and yeah with the cargo e-cargo bike i can i can load uh, lots of groceries there actually um you saw there i had a cart <laughs> full yeah. and i was able to put everything on my tiny bike and and then just haul it haul it all back um it is it is fun and yeah. it gives you that sense of accomplishment you know it's no longer it's no longer just that task of right. having to go get groceries but now it's like Yay! I'm gonna go get some groceries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yay! I'm gonna go out for a, a bike ride in the winter time. Talk a little bit yes. about that. You're, I mean, not only are you, you're not a fair weather cyclist. You're you're going out there and enjoying even in the cold. Yeah, and if you notice that previous picture there where I went to get groceries, the mm -hmm. bike was also all <laughs> uh, prepped for winter, so it was yeah. really cold that yeah. day as well. Um, but yeah, definitely, that's another thing too. There are accessories, you know, to help. So for example, on the handlebars there that we have bogies, uh, and then the seat, we put some like fluffy <laughs> seat covers there as well. Um, but then, yeah, just dress up warm and, and off you go. Uh, it's not, it's not difficult. Maybe that first minute, right. That you leave your toasty home and maybe that first minute is a bit hard, but then you, you really get used to it and it's, it's no lo longer a problem, uh, especially when you start <laughs> pedaling and warming yourself up. So, yeah. It is. It is great, and I imagine. I imagine that some people might, you know, think that. Oh my goodness, it's so cold, and they're riding their bikes. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually not an obstacle. Yeah, yeah, and I love <laughs> the fact that uh, you know Brandon's got it decorated with some uh, lights on the uh, the Urban Arrow <laughs> there, so a little bit yeah. festive and getting in the spirit of things. So just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes. Um, Sometimes we just go like I sit, you know, inside mm -hmm. that I call I call it wheelbarrow. <laughs> so I just sit there and then we just go together. Um, you know, and, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. amazing how it's amazing how how people enjoy seeing that as well. Um, and here in Carmel, you see all sorts of bikes now you mm -hmm. see more yep. you, you see more cargo bikes you see more you know european uh like bikes as well that are not really for racing um right, right. they are really bikes for transportation or for just leisure rides and all you see plenty of of those here as well yeah 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 definitely well i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this up uh you know the uh 
the Urban Arrow is is a is a game changing uh, bike. It, it, it's it's kind of a it's it's a family. This is your your family SUV as a bike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll, I'll pull up this uh, this this is kind of the the tweet from uh, the tweet thread from Brandon about the the Urban Arrow. But there you had just mentioned that sometimes you'll <laughs> jump in and 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 you know go go for that. And of course you've got rain covering there. So how, how fun is that? It is super fun, especially because he was back there in the rain and, and I'm all covered up. I, and I love this video he clip here. I love this video clip here too, because he, you're, you're like, yep, family needs shocks on the Urban Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you're jostling. I know. I know. Yeah. There, there, it was a bit of, there were some bumps there and, and I was just like, I need shocks. <laughs> but it was still... It's, it's all so in fun. good fun. It's all in good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't Ta a deal breaker at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Tatiana, is there anything that we haven't discussed that you, you want to make sure to leave the audience with? Uh, no, I'll just, you know, I'll just uh, say it again that um, it's never too late to yeah. learn. Um, try different types of bikes and sizes maybe you know you find one that works out for you as well like it did for me right. um and i've i've met people i've met people about my age that told me uh oh i cannot ride a bike either and then i told them my story and now they're also you know interested okay so i'll look into it as well so i yeah i think it's worth it yeah. Yeah. That's so great. And so inspirational your story really is. And I'm just so delighted to finally have this opportunity to meet you, even though it's just uh, through the, the wonders of the internet here on, on the Ecamm studio. But uh, thank you so very much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Well, it was my pleasure to meet you and, and to be here. And well, next time you're in Carmel. So um Hopefully we can meet in person as well. <laughs> yes, yes. And I can show you my wee bike because I, I rode up there oh. on a Brompton. So Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Talk about little wheels. <laughs> Tiny <laughs> wheels. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode with Tatiana. Nothing makes me happier than seeing people discover the freedom and sense of empowerment that comes from riding more often to meet one's daily needs. I hope you found this episode helpful, interesting, and inspiring. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave a comment below, and of course, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just don't forget to ring that notifications bell. Two final reminders before I let you go, please check out my Active Town store for some zany Streets for People merchandise, and please consider joining my growing band of merry patrons on my Patreon account. Again, the link's in the description below and in the show notes. Well, that's all for this week's episode, so until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>